stop praying. Engage the one that you have come to meet. Engage the one that you have come to drink of. And you can by worship begin to connect on a deeper level with the Lord tonight. Connect with the Lord on a deeper level tonight. Connect with the Lord on a deeper level tonight. It's a good time to sing a song from your heart. Expressing your worship to the one that you have come to encounter. We have beckoned upon him for the living water. Can you raise your worship to him now? Can you raise your voice in worship to him? Worship is one of the ways that we invite him also. So you can pour out your worship unto him now. You can tell him what you want to tell him now. Pour out your worship. Meditate upon the goodness of the Lord. Meditate upon the benevolence of the Lord. The Lord has been good. The Lord is good. And it is on this basis that we can commit our lives to Him forever. Can you commit to the Lord in worship tonight? Oh, we give you worship. We give you worship. The one who daily loves us with benefit. We give you worship. Ensure that you are singing unto Him. Ensure that you are saying something to Him. We give you worship, our good Father. We give you worship, our good Lord. We give you worship. You are good and your mercy and yours forever. We give you worship.
is that to be able to accurately show a heart of gratitude. You must be able to look upon, you must be able to think. Reasoning must be involved. Reasoning must be involved. I love the way she, she left that song. She first said, Oh, you, you love me. You loved me. You loved me. And then from you love me, then I love you. Because he first loved us. What compels our love is that we understand that he first loved us. compels your loving your loving him should be from the heart of gratitude let me be sponsored by the realization of his love for him the love Without singing the song, you can allow the instrumentalist just play on. Can you just think? What I want you to do tonight is to think. What I want you to do is to reckon. Is to think, 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 think. Perico poco breke tene me cobra tascava. Because you can join into offering a song. Mene cobra cozinas. You can jump into speaking and in no cobraca bella bracadinos. And your speaking will, will have no weight. And me compre que susto pronosis. Can we record? Can we reason? Can we reason? Araba compre que dira shaktaka. When she began leading us in the worship tonight, she started with, I'll worship you forever. I will love you forever. It is because I have checked, I have checked, I have looked, I've taken a costly look again and again. And I've come to find out that I should live my entire life worshiping with the heart of gratitude. I should live my entire life in worship. Not just offering a song, but living for you, living for you, living for you as an offering of gratitude. Saying this love is too good is because you have reckoned. No, 
is a son of a man who has actually The word of the Lord unto us this season is about dedications. But you see, it takes a man who can reckon to be able to dedicate. We are wired that way as men not to want to give our, our lives, commit our lives unto another.
We love you, Jesus. We will serve you. We have no other option. When we came in to agreement with you, when you brought us in into the kingdom, we may not have been taught, we may not have not known, but we are coming to realize that is a covenant we came into. You have fulfilled your part and you are fulfilling your part. And we will not fail to fulfill our parts. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can you make welcome someone to church this evening? You're welcome to church. First and foremost, I would like to give God thanks for this opportunity to stand before God's people. I know somebody will be thinking, why is it that every time you have to, and we would always do it. And we're doing it because it's real. It's not because it's part of the motions. It's always a privilege and to see it as one. I will give God thanks for it. <clears throat> and I also would like to celebrate my father, the father, the said man of this house for this great privilege. And as I usually say, uh, I hope you're praying for him so that he's out of town to be back soon. But I hope you are praying for him. And if you have not been, please do well too. Do well too. It should be part of your dedications. Uh, and just as he taught on Sunday, that it should be part of your reasonable service. Are we together? That if, you, if indeed you are reasonable, I hope my words are not heavy. It's not me that said it's scriptures. <laughs> it's, it's scriptures that use that word. That if you are truly reasonable. I know there are people who get offended at every usage of word. But it's not, it's not an insult. It's, it's, it's the fact that if truly you have reasoned, you should be able to commit to praying for him. All right. So, can we celebrate Mama too? She's also not around. And I must also say my own thank you for Ladies Conference. So, like I said, the word of the Lord to us in this season has been around dedications dedications and on Sunday Papa did quite a lot to bring us into the understanding of dedications and also rededications we journeyed eventually into rededications he, he had to do to bring us into the three layered expression one is coming into the Christ a dedication then in case there has been a shortfall then a rededication <clears throat> tonight uh, the thought I'll be sharing with us is in line however necessarily um, it's, uh, it will not be dedication in itself but it's a very very similar word and the reason I by the time I begin to go into the teaching it will look to you like okay this is it is the same thing yes it, it, it is to some level but because of where the Holy Spirit will be taking us to it would 
it will go wider than just dedications unto God and unto the kingdom. However, the summary of it, the base of it all is still dedication to the kingdom because what we will be going into aside to what we have been doing is also captured in our culture in the kingdom. Are we together? So for those who like to have a topic, for me, I struggle a lot with topics. I, Sister Timmy is, is, is aware. When God... with me, a discussion with me, many times it just brings a burden and then I pay attention to the burdens and from there more things begin to come, more things begin to come, so many times I don't start with a topic, so it's after the end, I'm okay, well, I'm not trying to, okay, this way we journey, okay, what, what can be? be the best topic to capture it so sometimes you have to wait on the Lord to, to give a topic and sometimes he gives a go ahead to, to give it a topic so for those who would like a topic it's having respect unto commitments having respect unto commitments having respect unto commitments Okay, um, so that you don't just think that we just brought it out of somewhere. Let's look at uh, Psalms. Although this will be like, a pre, like I'm preempting myself, but we'll just do it and then we'll come back there. We'll journey back there. Psalms 74, verse 20. Just to explain that there's something as such as having respect. Now, you know, uh, the key word in this topic is what? Huh? Commitment. Now, if you look at the scriptures projected or the scriptures that you have, what do you see? What do you see? Huh? Covenant. And then, like I said, what we have been joining with has been dedications. All of these words have intertwining effects. Are we together? They almost mean the same things at certain levels. But for some reasons, I've had to, is it dichotomize or trichotomize them? So, but I will be staying with the word commitments. Um, because I know that there is, an, there is a subconscious understanding of covenant in the mind of majority of people. So just to simplify it so that we don't go to, we just choose the word commitment. In dedication is commitment, am I right? Am I right? In covenant is also commitment. So, but there is something of such as having respect unto a commitment that you have made. <clears throat> it is the psalmist that brought us into this understanding. This was the prayer of the psalmist that have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. And in understanding this, you will understand that there is a covenant between God and his own people. Are we together? And part of the content of the covenant is preservation. Are we together? At this point, the psalmist begins to ventilate a cry that you see, the habitations of the earth Or the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. That in this wicked world, that's what, it, that, that's what that means. You see, there is a covenant that you have had with us. 
that we will not be touched by the 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 uh, the onslaughts of the enemy of the world against us we will be preserved such as what Jesus began to say and my prayer is not that you take them out of the earth but you keep them the children of Israel at some point were in Egypt and we remember vividly that there was a different atmosphere around them covenant kept their experience made their experience different from what was generally experienced are we together so the psalmist began to ventilate a cry that have respect unto your covenant and then if you go to 21 it says oh let not the oppressed return ashamed because part of the covenant captures the oppressed part of the covenant also captured the poor there are a lot more and because that's not basically our endeavor for tonight i might not stay around these things and there's a particular scripture that talks about okay was recently a woman the, my, the person I served with when I served uh, in youth service was sharing an experience with me and then she quoted the scripture and my heart, Kai, a tenant of hers has been living in her house for the past about six or seven years and the woman will not pay rent and because she's a lawyer she would use the law even against the owner of the house and that's how she would not pay rent for over six years so many times this woman will call me and lament hey see you see you and then suddenly she called me at some point and said that look at this now that she's not even happy but you see god cannot not fight for his own and she's widowed so she quoted that scripture i've forgotten how that scripture puts how it puts that uh, word that maybe do not treat the widow somehow poor their god will fight for them or something i mean this woman who has been using the law against her actually lost her husband and that was like a total turn for her I'm only saying all of this is that many things are captured in the covenant. But the psalmist was at a point where he needed to cry that have respect unto thy covenant. So if we go back to 20, if he says have respect unto thy covenant, it means that there's a possibility of not having respect unto covenant. And what it does mean is just simple. I have preempted myself. Well, just to establish to us that there's something as having respect unto covenant and not having respect unto covenant we will jump to that point where we begin to see uh, what it means so for our topic is having respect unto commitments all right so on sunday papa began to take us uh, and began to explain to us that the kingdom has been established as one of privileges and not just privileges alone but also of demands and I said it must be noted that the kingdom does not only have privileges and Papa in giving it more expression says that side is called the commercial side. How many of us have listened to the message again? How many of us? N nobody. Jesus. You see, I usually say something, and I've been saying it in recent times, so now I have to minister that. We are doing our own part as to bring emphasis. I mean, like, re emphasize the things God is communicating, which is our own labor. But you see, uh, there's this part, I guess it should be in Colossians. Where Paul began to admonish and say that 
that um, be, not, be not deceived or something or be not carried away that when he was making that uh, commitment not unto the teachers but unto the hearers unto the ones who have been taught that they should take it lest they, be, they, they will be overthrown by wrong doctrines it means there is a part to what uh, uh, the membership has to do in ensuring their growth when the leaders come and present forth and bring forth doctrine and labor in the word to bring forth the word of the Lord there is a labor that the ones who hear are to go into I was sharing recently about the um, the the Berean technology how that they do not just hear and let it be that way but they go back and check again if the things that have been said are so not only about checking whether they are so sometimes like Papa said okay Apostle Simon said that you can only maximize about 20% of every message at the first hearing so it is very important and imperative for us to go back and check and listen again are we together and that's why the first part of this my labor will be more of bringing back summary it is not because we don't have what to say it is because until I, I, I've taught us here that the being blessed by a message or a sermon is not about the euphoria of the time the sermon is preached or how you feel the tingling feeling no it is that what is taught now begins to find expression it becomes life that's when you can truly say that you are blessed you are not blessed until you become the message until the word becomes flesh are we together so it says the commercial side and also the demands so one of the scriptures he used was exodus 19 verse 3 exodus chapter 19 verse 3 And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, verse 4, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. So what God began to bring forth here, according as was taught, is that the Lord began to advertise his doings he began to advertise his privileges and Papa was saying on that Sunday that he does not lay a demand until he has given are we together it looks like we are refreshing now that he does not lay a demand until he has given and it is so that he would have a legitimate ground to make a demand are we together to place a demand so first is that he wants to place a demand and he still have more privileges to offer but he would first advertise privileges the privileges he had given and how i bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself then verse 6 verse 5 sorry now therefore if he therefore means that based on the previous if you will obey my voice now I want to lay a demand and this demand will still have privilege attached to it if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then shall be then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine verse 6 that's another privilege and it shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So there is another privilege that would come. There is another offering that he wants to give. But he had to uh, sandwich the privileges that have been and the one that is to come with a commitment. Are we together? A commitment that he requires of them. It looks like we are refreshing now. Okay, so we can move better. 
So I'm just going to run through because, and if you need to get more about this whole thing, get back home and then refresh yourself listening to the message again. So it says the demand side is the committal side. Also, the privileges portray a commitment on the side of the kingdom or of God. Are we together? That's the privileges. Is the one who has committed to give those privileges. Are we together? Um, as we go on, you will understand. Himself, while the demands portray the commitment on the side of one who is brought into the kingdom. Are we together now? I mean, in saying who is brought into the kingdom in relation to our time and our day. I said God many times in his dealings with his people strikes such contract. I call it contract. Remember the, 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 um, the, the theme or the topic is what? Having respect unto all commitments. But I call it contract because I used a, 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 a simile, another word that can also uh, give us a clearer picture of what God does when he brings privileges and he, he, he lays demand are we together we might not see it as that it can either be referred to as a covenant it can be referred to as contract I know contracts to you sounds quite secular right but if you understand the pure English um, definition of what a contract is you would understand that it captures what we're talking about are we together now so God strikes such contract such commitment with his people he mostly does not leave his commitment his own commitment he hardly leaves it open-ended are we together we know of the message of God are we together and the message of God many times does not require your doings all right and many times I have taught here that you can either live by truth or live by mercy. And the way what we were ordained actually to live by truth. However, mercy has been a stopgap provision for us to cover up for our inadequacies. Because scriptures makes us realize that because we are humans, because we are in this body of death, we have frailties and we have infirmities. That's what what I was trying to express while I was while we were worshiping the Lord in the beginning and we were making commitments to him that for the fact that we are beings in this realm it is not the language of men to be consistent are we together that it's the language of spirit and because God actually requires consistency it requires constancy and because he might not have it because of this our frailties he needed to bring another provision called mercy that's one thing papa was trying to give an expression to on sunday about the idea of a 70 right that he was saying that god understands your frame are we together but we are ordained to live by truth. So when it comes to the mercy of God, he might not have demands. But you see, when it comes to living by truth, it means living by the principles that are set. Are we together? When it comes to that, God does his part. And he expects that we do our own part. Are we together now? So commitment is required of us in that case. So when it comes to living by truth, God makes his promises in light of that conditional. Are we together? We know that you see, occasioning his love is his mercy. It's why his love is unconditional. Right? But you see, when it comes to how we should live, which is by truth, it comes with many conditions. So you see, that if, we, if you will serve me, I will give you covering on this end. The hand of the enemy would not be able to advance towards you. Your seeds 
the things you lay your hands upon will prosper you see many of such commitments in scriptures are we together but in line of living by trust so I said he, does, he many times does not leave his commitments to us or his privileges open ended he brings them and as Papa was sharing with us on Sunday many times he gives those things to an end to have a legitimate ground to seek a demand are we together there is this concept of there's this idea of making men making men understand that um, God exists because of them and that's the commercial side the God who occasions salvation and will progressively occasion salvations so all that you see in that side is to come to a God that you can use unto your hand are we together so you come to a God that you can use unto your hand God exists so that you can smile God exists so that you can be happy God exists so that you can live a good life it's a gospel that does not seek demand and what Papa did with us on Sunday is to bring us to that point of um, moving beyond the commercial side of the kingdom into the committal side to make us realize that the, Je the Jesus that we have come to the Christ that we have come to is not just the Savior but also a Lord are we together I'm trying to take it very simply so that we can understand I'm not you see I'm not trying to use his words I'm trying to bring it to us more simply in simple language so I said he doesn't leave it open-ended most times because there is there is an agenda on his heart if you understand why man was made in the first place the reason for which we are here you will understand why many times he gives the privileges to make a demand so many have preached that God just loved man for no reason but many times I've tried to preach this thing and I've been careful in expressing it because some persons might not understand it and they might fight it yes we say God's love is unconditional are we together and it's true what it doesn't matter what you do or not do he loves all right we understand that his trust is conditional are we together are you understanding that his trust is different from his love so God loves everybody but he does not trust everybody are we together but even in understanding that God's love is unconditional we must also understand that you see God had to pour out his love on man there is a there is first a reason even in the first place there's a reason for which he made man are we together there is an agenda on the heart of God you see what why man is here why we are here is beyond us is beyond now that's why you cannot just be living your life here and not look back into history and not check back into what 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 necessitated God bringing forth man if you have not journeyed that far you will not be able to maximize purpose not just your purpose but the purpose of man generally are we together so it is because he has an agenda in the earth and you see that agenda supersedes any man every man is just a, a, an instrument is, is is a means to an end are we together I know he's rattling your idea because man man has been painted as something of 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 nature was but i've taught it here and over again that's it there's an agenda on the heart of god 
and that's why he does what he does so it is that he seeks partnership with men and he understands that like i was saying while we were worshiping and praying that god understands your frame he understands that naturally a man would not want to commit himself unto anything a man wants to run his life the way he can think a man wants to be in control are we together so god many times seeks a demand because man necessarily don't look as far as understanding the reason for which he was made and the reason for which he exists so what god needed to devise is to devise a means of a bait are we together so he tries to bait us by showing us privileges and based on the privileges then he makes a demand are we together and when you see um in economics every customer likes to maximize what everyone likes to maximize profit whether a businessman the one who is selling or the one who everybody wants to maximize either um the the, the money they are offering or profit what they are meant to gain in return of the goods being offered or services offered are we together so god understands our friend that we are naturally like that yoruba says cause it we like it far we like good things so he devised a means to be able to bet us into what he wants to do he would establish something he will flash and advertise something for us in front of us that can compel us into a dedication and it is because he has an agenda in the earth and then Psalm 115 verse 16 makes it clear that the heavens and the heavens are, is the Lord's but the earth the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's but the earth are they given to the children of men so God has established everything legally and ensure that nobody aside human beings will have authority in this side of the divine anyone any being who wants to exact authority or who wants to find expression will need the help of a man in this realm are we together and then he has placed his agenda upon men and he knows that men are, are, are full of frailties they may not be able to pull through so he brought up that idea so I said here that he has given okay the the demands of God from us who have been called into the kingdom the devotion the dedication that is required of us as those who have been saved who have been brought into the king is in two sides number one is the generic and number two is the peculiar or the specific the generic means there are general demands are we together for everyone who has come into the kingdom Everyone must be schooled to understand that there are demands as we go on you begin to understand but at the same time you must also understand that beyond the general demands there are peculiar demands I call it specific demands it means it goes beyond the general demands from everyone who is saved who is part of the kingdom there are person specific so when I said the specific the specific can be person specific the specific can be a nation specific and that nation specific has different branches of it it can be a clan specific so of the tribes of Israel God laid a specific demand on the Levite are we together there was a specific demand that he laid on the Levite and it is peculiar to that but it does not end with that testimony because what God needed was not just to give Anna something 
it was that he, need, he, needed, to, he needed that son so God gave Anna a son because God needed a son are we together now so sometimes there's no way Anna would have been able to come into that understanding that there is something that you know God needed the only way God could have got her was that route with which he took her are we together but whether written whether express or hidden it does not change the fact that many times God has a need so we must know that it can either be expressed or it may be hidden so I said when a man comes into the kingdom and this is the kingdom side when a man comes into the kingdom he automatically comes into a covenant and that covenant is what is called the new covenant however many are not schooled to know that at salvation that it's a covenant they came into they were neither taught also the terms of the covenant that when you called when you confess Jesus Lord you felt yes you were saved but you came into a commitment even your confession state that you confess Jesus as as what as Lord so there is what Jesus had done are we together and that is the gospel when it's been preached to you the works of the cross which is the gospel your state when you were in the world what Christ did to salvage your state which is the the, the commercial side and then a demand that you come to him and you call him Lord and calling him Lord does not just end at a word being said it is the start of a journey a journey in covenant are we together um, so that we can understand this uh, let's go to Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 verse 9 that he that shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that, the, that God hath raised him from the dead thou shall be thou shall be what? saved verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation it means that if you will do this based on what has been preached to you you will come into that salvation by believing um go back to verse 8 okay uh, that's not the scripture i'm looking for verse 9 verse 9 okay yes if thou shalt confess with thy mouth what the Lord Jesus so your confession is confessing the Lord every new we bow and every time we confess that what Jesus is Lord so what you confess is the Lordship and when you confess the Lordship it's a beginning of a covenant that I have come to see what you have done I have come to reckon with it and I will take a journey in that light so that we can understand let's also proceed further um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 to 15 2 Corinthians chapter 5 Papa gave us this understanding on Sunday but with different scripture it says for the love of Christ constrained us because what we thus judge that if one died for all then where then where then we're all dead verse 15 and that he died for all that they which what live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again so what happened here 
is an advertisement of the works that Jesus did. This is um, um, captured here is the reality of um, uh, 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 the reality of, of, of exchange, substitution. Are we together? That I was substituted. He took my place so that I can now take his place. And I've made examples around this before. That if one gave his life for you, you had a fault and someone had to take your life. You had a fault that the penalty of that fault is death. And one had to come and say, I will give my life for you. And then he died. And I, I would ask that should you now say you have a purpose that you should live for? If you can reckon, you will find out that now from the point that that person died in your stead, you no longer have what is yours to pursue. Because if you truly can reckon, it's no longer your life that you are living. One has taken your life and is gone. Are we together? Now the life you are living is not yours. Because legally, it is his life that you now live. Are we together? So you have no right to live for what you think you want to live for. The purpose for which that one came is what you should now carry on your shoulder. Are we together now? I want to rush. So, what we see here in verse 14 is a reckoning. He says, we does what? We does judge. Romans 6, 11, Paul also says that reckoning yourself, he began to speak about inclusion. That was the, the, the theme in Romans. Am I right? Yes. It was inclusion. So Paul began to say that if you understand that you have been included, both in inclusion and in substitution, there is a demand that is laid on the one who is saved. And it is for him to live on the one who died for him. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead because you were included in him. If you check the team from verse 1, it was inclusion. You were included in him and in that you died with him unto sin. You were buried with him together. But now, in that he lived, you also now does what? You also now do what? You live through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are we together? So you have what? A, a demand laid on you to live for him. So, now, what does commitment literally mean? Promise or agreement to do something in future when we say in future the future can mean the next one minute can mean the next two minutes but a promise or an agreement that you're going to to do something another one is being bound emotionally or intellectually to a course of action or to another person or persons so when we commit most especially in the context of our commitment to the Christ we are committed to him we are bound to him another one is a state of being pledged so after we have reckoned we make a pledge being pledged or engaged the legal side says the deliberate or negligent surrender it can either be deliberate or it can be negligent but it has to include a surrender of all rights of property. Right to property. And right to property means right to ownership. Are we together now? That right to owner, you commit to something. You dedicate to. Means you, you surrender all your rights to property. Right of ownership. Either you deliberately do it or you negligently do it and that's what that's the state of many people who have com confessed the Lord because they confess the Lord but they do not understand the terms of the commitment that they made we are coming down to where I'm going exactly so I said here every commitment covenant dedication or contract has terms that guide it an agreement a legally binding contract must contain at least one promise that is a commitment or offer. Are we together? By an offerer. That's the one who offers. 
and to be accepted by an offeree to do something that there is no physical documentation for a commitment does not invalidate the commitment in the realms of the spirit i'm going to come there it becomes criminal for a party not to fulfill the terms of a covenant or of a commitment of a contract hence the need to understand the terms of a commitment the terms of a covenant when you sign a contract you want to invest in a particular company what do you sign you sign a contract that okay i will invest this social amount and this is what you're offering me that by the next six months you're going to be giving me a return on investment of about 20 percent is that not so and all of those things are already detailed in the contract all that is required is that you bring up your pen and do what sign your signature means what an agreement to a contract an agreement to a commitment now so once that contract is sealed it becomes criminal for a breach of that commitment it becomes criminal for a breach of that agreement and that is where we're going for tonight it is that many actually have seen have experienced the 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 the, the, the privileges of god and have come to confess and like we did on sunday we have dedicated ourselves and for those who rededicated have rededicated themselves but unfortunately it is not that that is the first time that many have dedicated themselves but there is something that is usually wrong it is that at some point or the other they lose ground and then we have to come through the same cycle over and over again but our labor tonight is to understand what exactly is the problem why do we have to come through that cycle over and over again are we together so i'm going to be cutting many things back so that we can i thought i there is an evil that has spread now generationally it is it was a minimal thing in past generations however with the passing of times it has become increasingly widespread a white evil increasingly widespread evil second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4 we have used the scripture mostly in recent times it says this know also that the last in the that in the last days perilous times shall come and many times you have read it down and when you read you find out that it begins to speak of the decadence that we begin to happen are we together it begins to speak of a declining in the kind of life in essence in values that will begin to happen and it will only happen because of the times that you find yourself he says in the last days perilous times shall come as the world goes by as the times pass it becomes more difficult he says darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people as the times grow by as the times go by darkness will become gross darkness are we together so when we were much younger the things that we um you know there are things that you will wear okay I, how many of you have seen this pic, uh, pictures they said um uh, it was tagged when before satan became a tailor you know that picture uh, how many of you know the picture i'm talking about that you see ladies dress down like you understand over the times there is a departure there's a there's a there's a depravity that keeps mounting and keeps mounting we it started coming at that point at those days if you have clothes that they are even reaching your nail it's more like kai until you are going but now the in thing is the nail so when it begins to go beyond the knee we begin to say kai kai suspect but that's for those of us that are saying are you getting what i'm trying to say but these things will keep happening as the time goes by we were not promised that it will get better it will only get worse so the first evil is that men no longer consider what proceeds from them what they say or what they do matthew chapter 12 from verse 36 to 37 and that's what papa started with on sunday when he began to raise a burden as to the um, the statements that was made about being the Holy Ghost and he said you can't make that statement once and you should not be checked it is because over the times in the last days when the perilous times come 
men will cast off restraints. Are we together? So, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof. Men don't give credence to this word anymore. I mean believers. Don't give credence to this anymore. That it shall be given account of in the day of judgment. Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy and by thy words thou shalt be when last have you heard this scripture when last have you put the scriptures in your heart to define what you say to determine what you say and what you do are we together now James 1 verse 19 James 1 verse 19 quickly I'm getting closer to where I'm going he says where for my beloved this is an admonition he says although I know this context is a different whatever but the point we, we, that we want to bring out is the admonition he says where for my beloved let every man be what swift to hear and what slow to speak slow to wrath going on from this verse he was speaking about wrath however it's about a value that used to be that he was charging them about that when you have come into the kingdom one of the values that you must commit to is that value of being slow to speak and what being quick to hear and slow to speak and why am i bringing all of this it is because men actually make commitments so fast and so quick not checking the terms of the commitment so men put themselves in commitments that they can actually cannot fulfill actually before you bring anybody to christ they should or when they are saved they should be exposed to what coming to the kingdom entails and choose whether they are still ready to go home or they want to draw back are we together are we together so papa was saying on sunday he said it must be something that you reckon you reckon you must think it through is it worth it is it worth making the commitment but unfortunately people say things and it's the same reason people wear things somebody buys a cloth and bastard is written on it and the person is wearing it and after two years you're asking i've met people like that and i'm asking what is it? the person says i don't even know and you have been wearing it for two years and you never you never thought to check that something is written and to know what is written it's the same reason people just say things they're not even careful of ecclesiastes chapter 5 ecclesiastes chapter 5 ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 1 keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of god this is the context of the house of god but beyond the house of god we are going to get there it is that there are commitments we are going to make that's why i used the word commitments are we together that goes beyond just the God, a commitment to God. You must understand that scripture preaches our commitment to God and our commitment between us as brothers. Are we together? Even the laws of God captured two points. One is our relationship with God and the other part, point is what? Our relationship with our other men. So he speaks many times again and again of our conversation amongst men. So he says, when that goes to the house of God, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Because of time, I might not be able to explain all of this. For they consider not that they do evil. Verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart. All I'm trying to bring us to tonight is to sit with the commitments that you have made with God. Not just with God, but also come to that point where you are not quick in making commitments that you understand the terms of commitments that you make and it is by this that you will be able to have respect unto commitment that is made be not hasty to utter anything before god for god is in heaven and thou upon the earth therefore let thy words be few verse 3 for a dream coming through multitudes of business and a fool's voice is known by what? It's part of our teachings in the kingdom. 
that a fool's voice is known by what? Multitude of words. Verse 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. And you say, this is to God. But I am also inferring that not just to God, every time you make a commitment, every time you make a vow, it doesn't have to sound like a vow. You see, we make many commitments on daily basis that we are not aware of. Are you aware that every time you step in front of a woman who sells something and you buy, it's a commitment that you are entering into? That's what I was saying before, that you see that it is written, that is, there's a legal document or not, does not mean that it is not a covenant, it is not a contract that is being signed. Are we together? I know that we are students and this can be with us that there are times we do not have money and because you stay in a hostel where there's a woman who sells things and the woman is favorably disposed to students because she understands that there are seasons like that in students life when they might not have money and then he says come and take this thing and then you pay later. I used to, we used to have that experience while we were in school. So I remember there's a woman in our buttery who based on your relationship with her you can get things but you take note of the things that you get and sometimes you can get those things and then some people will get those things and at the end of the month they come to pay there's another woman called Iafati Iafati can you know she's, she's both Aousa and Senegal so she can offer things her, her mind is free but because of that many people took advantage not having respect Onto commitment and it is the same thing it is the same thing that affects us in our relationship with with God because some things are not written now many times some people go like that they graduate and leave the thing the borrowings the owings that they have and go and I've seen men who their lives turned somehow just because of 5,000 naira, maybe all together all that you hold was just 3,000 and your life begins to take a turn just because you would not pay your due. So, Ecclesiastes began to show us that before you make a commitment, think about the terms of the commitment. Know what you are going into. Are you really ready to, to make the commitments? It can also happen with, you know, parents have these issues too. And it's not only parents. Even you big sisters and big uncles of children. So maybe I'm, I'm going now, my baby is meant to follow me home. But she's staying with you and she likes your hand. And then I want to carry her, she says, no. She... And then you now say, okay, go and meet mom, go and meet daddy, I will buy you biscuit. Many times you do not know. As you think it's joke, it's not joke. We have to come to that point where we, we, we our, our words are in check. That you do not utter a thing that you do not mean. You know people say things that they don't mean. That if you say it, you make sure to ensure that you fulfill it. So I said, there's this error of not being able to fulfill our side of the commitment. So God has brought you into experiences. God has brought you into a season of prayer. You prayed for five months and in that season, God gave you clear-cut instructions on what to do, when to pray, how to pray, what is going to happen in the next 10, 10 20 years of your life and the commitment that you need to make. And then you vowed and said, oh Lord, I will do it. You came to that point just like we came this, this earlier before the service and we began to commit to the Lord. I will serve you, I will do this, I will do that. But many things came Oh, after many years down the line and then you, you have forgotten your commitment and you fail and I remember I said it is criminal not to fulfill your side of the commitment whatever commitment to God or to men is the reason people no longer have, have integrity so I said there are three basic reasons why we fall into that trap three three and that's where i'm going to end it three basic reasons number one is ignorance of the terms of commitment ignorance 
on the terms of commitment. You know, people commit to things they don't know. You know, as simple as this thing we say, um, terms and conditions apply. Terms and conditions when you are um, installing an app, and then all you just do is you don't read, you just accept. That's how many people entered into debt, serious debt that they are not aware of. I'm aware of, let me not just spoil business. I'm aware of banks. Or maybe it just happened in that branch or probably is person specific to that bank official. That the documents, the contract will be brought to you even when you read all of the details. There are parts of the contract that are not there. You sign and they bring it in later. Many years down the line, then they tell you, this is what you signed and you're wondering, but I did not see this in the, in the, in the contract. I'm saying that is even possible. But for many, they don't even care. Many people have signed off their own, own buildings. They have signed off their own properties, not knowing because of that negligence of keeping to the terms of commitment. Being intentional. Matthew 26, 14. Matthew 26, 14 to 25. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest, listen, and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. You see, the problem Judas had was not that he really was after selling out his master. His problem was gain. He was so blinded by the gain that he did not check the terms of commitment. How you, you, I know you'll be asking, why did I say so? But you will see it. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Maybe he did not even know. The weight, he didn't understand that he was betrayer. He just said, Jimmy is to point him to you. I, 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 what, what was he pointing? He's, he's not just pointing. He didn't know what would come out of it. So he didn't understand the terms of commitment. And from that time, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Go on. Now, the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, What will thou, where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat Passover? Go on, 18. And he said, Go into the city, such a man, and said unto him, The master said, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover. And at thine house with my disciples verse 18 verse 19 and the disciples did verse 20 and now when he the heaven was come he sat down with the 12 verse 21 and as they did it he said verily i say unto you the one of you that one of you that one of you shall betray me and they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him lord is it high? Verse 23. And, he's, and he answered and said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But who unto that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed? It had been good, it would have been good for him that he that the man, good for that man, if he had not been born. Verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master. Is it I? He was not being fake. At this point, he was not being fake. He actually did not know. He actually did not com connect, pointing him to betrayal. Probably he was not told the reason for the pointing. But he should not be of a follower of Jesus to lack discernment. And he said unto him, Thou hast said. So there is that, there is that problem of being ignorant. And many reasons can make us ignorant. You can be beclouded. Another one is the decisive failure to keep the terms of commitment. And this is from a wicked heart. Colossians 4 1 talks about masters who take off their servants who received service of them but would not pay them their dues. That's just one example. Ephesians 6 9 also talks about masters too. 
but just like I was sharing about how that you take things of men and you fail to pay you borrow and you fail to pay back now it becomes a life and now it is also expressed in your work with God the one who has committed or has made commitment is not free from distractions Papa also made that statement on Sunday so also there is the third one which is a swaying from the terms of commitment it is because you are not free from distractions but unfortunately many do not know how to measure accuracy in their work many do not know when they have begun to stray so the strains which can be by forgetfulness right another one can be by change of status that you made a commitment imagine in first Samuel chapter 1 verse 11 imagine as Anna's vowed that made that vow imagine that she had the child now and it happens to us many times we seek the Lord for something we cry and we say to him I will commit this thing I will give it back to you we cry for a child like Anna I will give this child back to you but many times down the line many people forget that they have offered such a child to God but Hannah scripture records of Hannah that she went back and fulfilled her vow but many do forget my pastor friend in Ibadan pastor did the mother went to ask of him and his brother of the Lord and she vowed to God that if you give me children they will serve you but you see along the line while they were growing up this is mom so loved him so much that she had to travel to the US to wash toilet and do things to ensure that he went to a private university all in an attempt to give him a good life now this boy that has been labeled over now comes after graduating and now says i want to serve jesus you know what the mom remembered my sufferings in u.s washing toilet we just go like that it's our first disappointment was that she asked him to go and get a job in abuja but you see you are older than the age so you have to change your age and claim that you are this age and this, my friend said no it's not possible mommy i will not do it and she began to weep and began to cry that you mean I spent on you this much I suffered on you this much and the end now will be that you want to serve God oh my God I want to say pastor so there is that place of a change of status can change your reasoning you can get relaxed to forget your commitment see you are, you are not the first we have seen many people have you not seen many people who were fellowship presidents while you were on campus when you were in under level it looked like they loved the lord they were so pious sanctimonious and sacramental they committed to god their life looked like a template but you know what has become of many of them some of them became what they have become now because at some point they entered into a comfort they got a job that now has changed their thinking many people who love the lord now in nigeria step into other countries and say no they don't do things like that here now their reasoning changes papa was saying on sunday that you who never thought you could ever use a research of two hundred thousand. God began to give you some just to encourage you now you are beginning to think of vanities another reason is deceitfulness of riches Luke 12 from verse 16 Luke chapter 12 verse 16 and he spoke a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruit and you see he has reasons for what he's doing and he said this will i do i will pull down my band and build greater and there will i bestow all my fruit and my goods and i will say to my soul so thou hast much goods laid up for many years take thine ease eat drink and be merry 
But God said unto him, Thou fool, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then, whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So many enter into that plane of riches where the deceitfulness of riches set in and they forget their commitment to God. I said, having respect, Abi, unto commitments. There's a general evil that we don't, we don't respect commitments anymore. The more reason divorce is, 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 is scattered everywhere, the more reason it's easy to cheat even for married people. Having no respect unto commitments. My labors tonight is to bring us to that point that as we, the Lord is demanding de dedication to Him of us, we will sit down and understand the dedications, understand the terms, and be ready to stay true. I understand that you see, it takes the Lord to help to, to, to keep the demands, to keep the terms. But you see, you must make up your mind to have respect unto commitments. The labors of our fathers in ministry also tell that when God took you out at some point and gave you an instruction on how to run the ministry, on how to labor. Like I said earlier, I said the demands might be generic, the demands also can be person specific. So the Lord has said to you, you see, I understand that we have different understandings and all, but where I was raised, I was raised by a man who does not come into a meeting if his ministry until the time of his ministration. And it is not those that will go and sit and be chatting and doing things. He labors, most especially, he would have done his labors in bringing the world together, but he will labor in prayer till he enters. And I, I'm speaking of this man that I, um, I speak of. When he comes, he sings a song. Before the end of the song, everywhere scatters. He will still teach, labor in the world. But you see, you see a height of expression with him. But that was given to him. So when we were on campus those days, five minutes to his ministration time, the secretary will call him and say, it's almost time. Then he will walk in from that place. That was given to him. And every time he holds the mic, it was with him in literal terms. I see why Peter yet speak. The power of God hit while yet speaking. So there are commitments. Maybe there are people here who the Lord has given commitment to and God brought you into that place at some point and you have made a commitment unto God. And you have left that commitment. It is a time to return. Ladies on Fire Conference is another platform to indict us and to indict many and to put us on our toes. The expression we saw in that place, we thank God that is grace, but it was not just grace. Grace pulled men to labor every night to bring forth that expression. There are many men that God put a ministry on, put a labor on. But unfortunately, God is not having the travail of his soul over the commitment he has given to them because the path to which they would commit, the path to, the, to which he committed to them, for them to dedicate into, they have left it. They have left their specific instructions and followed after the things they think is working. How now people do the ministry? I know that it is excellent, it is lightning at all. The commitments they were given from onset, they have left it. Have you respect unto commitments? Can we rise up on our feet tonight? And the prayers tonight is, I will not be caught, I will not be a victim of the times. Like I read to us that in the last days, perilous times shall come, there will be a, there will be a, a degrading it will be a normal and it has become a normal and it is because of the passage of times it is because of the seasons we are into 
it is because of the season we are in but i will not be a victim of that atmosphere cast lord you would help me to have respect unto my commitments to you i make dedications unto you but i require i require help help to have respect With everything we do with the very life we've been given help us to be intentional help us to understand the life we've been given help us to understand what we ought to do how we ought to live help us to live intentionally help us Jesus help us we ask by your mercy we ask by your mercy we ask that mercy will be made available this evening. We ask that we go forth in your mercy. We ask for your mercy. Oh, we ask that you will look upon the people. You will look upon us with your mercy. We ask that you look upon us with your mercy. Oh, look upon us with your mercy and help us live intentionally. Help us live intentionally. Help us come to full understanding of the life that we now live. Help us not to live just selfishly. Help us not to live full of ourselves. Help us, Lord Jesus, to live strictly by your word. To live strictly by your word. To live strictly by your word. Help us, Jesus. Oh, we ask for your help. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy. That you will look upon us with mercy. Even as we go forth of your presence. That these words will be imprinted upon our hearts. That these words will burn in our bones. That these words will be inscripted will be inscribed on our hearts that we will live intentionally and diligently by your word we bless you jesus we thank you for your mercy and for your intentionality we give you praise and glory thank you precious father thank you precious father Thank you, merciful one. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.